Let's take a look at our news headlines on this Wednesday. One man was sent to the hospital after a shooting late last night. Officers responding to East Main Street around 1130 for the report of a person shot outside the Hyatt downtown. Police say a 55 year old man was shot in the upper body. Officials say he was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. No suspects are in custody. If you have any information about this latest shooting in the city, call 911. Local leaders continue to focus on illegal firearms as they deal with the surge of violent crime in Rochester. Experts say easy access to firearms has played a key role. They also say not all gun owners secure their weapons, making them easy targets for theft. Most of the 35 homicides so far this year have been shootings, putting the city on track to surpass the total number of homicides all of last year. You know, if you have a unsecured weapon around and you leave it on your car seat because it's uncomfortable to carry um, or it's just lying around the house for anybody to take it or a burglar to take it, um, what you're probably going to see here is an increase in circulation in the illegal firearms market. Well, Rochester is currently on pace to see 70 homicides this year. Experts say this would mean the city would have a higher crime rate per capita than Chicago. Well, today, former President Donald Trump heading to the Texas border. He'll be joined by Republican politicians, including Texas Governor Greg Abbott. And we are joined by Washington correspondent Raquel Martin live in D.C. this morning. Good morning. This, of course, has been a hot topic all along the border there. Republicans and the former president very critical of the Biden administration's handling of the border. What are they saying, Raquel? Good morning. Well, we do expect the former president to rail against the Biden administration following the recent spike in migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border. He'll be heading to the Rio Grande Valley, where he'll participate in a roundtable and take a tour of his former border wall. And how has the Biden administration responded to all the criticism? Well, the Biden administration has been pushing back on some of this criticism. They say they are investing and trying to process some of these unaccompanied minors faster. They say they are keeping up with deportations, and they say they are actively trying to discourage people from coming to the U.S.-Mexico border, saying they still are uh, returning the vast majority of people um, seeking help here in the U.S. They are also investing big and trying to um, stop these people from coming in the first place. We know Vice President Kamala Harris just paid a visit to the border uh, uh, last week, uh, but her main function has been trying to work with leaders in these Central American countries uh, to try and have some deterrent tactics to keep people in their home countries rather than seek asylum here in the U.S. Yeah, it continues to be a critical, controversial topic. Raquel, thank you for your coverage of this this morning. Taking a look at other news in Miami, the death toll now stands at 12 as emergency crews continue to search for survivors after that partial building collapse. Almost 150 people are still missing. So far, over 3 million pounds of debris have been removed, all of it being photographed and examined for clues as to exactly what happened here. The White House says President Biden will travel to Surfside tomorrow to meet with the residents' families. Well, the time now is 6.49, 73 degrees already. You know, yesterday, too hot for me to take a run, too mm. hot for a lot of folks to take a run. But what about today, James? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be right on that threshold. It's going to be another morning where we start off in the lower 70s. Humidity still pretty high. We have an atmosphere primed not only for the heat, but storms as well. Here's the good news. If you're trying to get out on the golf course, we don't have any record heat uh, for today. I do not expect us to see 90 degrees. Uh, they'll have 90s in uh, maybe the southeastern part of the state, but not for us. The cooler air is starting to work in, and as it does, it's going to come with a cold front and come with a couple of showers and thunderstorms. So you see it there, lower 80s this afternoon. Heat index, we'll call it, in the mid-80s. Commute forecast coming up at the end of the show, Leah. All right, thank you so much. We're taking a live look now at your Sunrise Traffic Report. The major roadways, 394, 95, 90, no major accidents being reported right now, but there is an accident in Penfield on Five Mile Line Road at 104, so take note of that if you're heading in that direction. Well, the American College of Radiology and Society of Breast Imaging releasing new guidelines for breast cancer screening, and a local doctor helped co-author those guidelines. Carmela Boykin spoke with that doctor. She joins us live with what we need to know about this. Good morning, Carmela. Good morning, Leah. I'm outside Elizabeth Wendy Breast Care, where women, especially over the age of 40, are encouraged to receive an annual breast exam. And while, of course, these were 
in the old guidelines. They're emphasized in the new guidelines. The importance, they emphasize the importance of annual screenings. They also say all women should have a risk assessment by age 30, especially minority women. A new guidance published in the Journal of Ameri of the American College of Radiology highlights the importance of screening overlooked in overlooked or underserved populations, transgender individuals, and black women. I spoke with Dr. Stamatia Destunis, who helped co-author the guidelines and who says it's important all women are explicitly included. We just wanted to highlight, you know, black women, other minorities that may be at a higher risk. And what that means is they may, at the same age as a white woman, be diagnosed with a later stage tumor that's more aggressive, and they may have a higher chance of mortality. Dr. Destuna says she hopes they will lead to more discussion, education, and encourage more people to come in and have their life-saving screening. Reporting in Rochester, Carmela Boykin, News 8. Yeah, very important to check with your doctor about screenings. Thank you so much, Carmela. The guidelines, of course, for patients, but also doctors and radiologists to review as well. In our Family First segment this morning, we continue to talk about how to land your dream job. Experts say with so many companies right now desperate for workers, now is the time to start looking. They say there will be more competition once federal unemployment benefits run out and kids go back to school in September. But right now, companies are having a really hard time attracting workers, so they're offering more incentives like signing bonuses. Career Service Advisor Leroy Banks says one of the most important things to bring to a job interview is your confidence. Unfortunately, when we lose a job, whether downsized or terminated, we tend to think that the employer has taken all the skills away also, which is not true. That's one of my specialties. I really meet with individuals to help them regain their professionalism, remember who they are, because once you remember, you can't be stopped. He says the biggest mistake job seekers make, not practicing for the interview and researching the company's mission statement. Be ready to talk about your skills and what attracted you to that specific company. Now, coming up Friday, we're talking with another career advisor about how to negotiate exactly what you want. It could be flexible hours or a higher pay during the interview process. So tune in Friday for that. Time now for our GRE Morning Business Report. United Airlines makes a bet on an ongoing travel surge. The carrier says it is buying 200 new Boeing 737 MAX jets and 70 Airbus planes to grow its fleet and replace some of its aging jets. It's one of the largest commercial jet orders ever and highlights a growing recovery in the airline industry. Airports are scrambling to hire more staff amid the summer travel rush. The Transportation Security Administration offering $1,000 hiring bonuses as part of a push to add thousands of new screeners by September. Some airlines are racing to hire staff to man phone lines and support other parts of the business as well. Well, the deadline to apply for federal student aid is today. Your FAFSA is due if you need financial help for the 2020 through 2021 academic year. It means students can still get a Pell Grant for the past year. You still have time if you need aid for this coming academic year. The deadline is June 30th of 2022. All right, vaxxed, but still ready to fire up the apps. According to a new survey by Bumble, 91% of people polled said there's no longer a stigma attached to online dating. More than two-thirds believe you can fall in love with someone that you've never met in real life, and one in three still prefer the virtual date because it saves time and money. Interesting, isn't it? Mm. Well, here's what some folks might be talking about at the water cooler. Besides that, what we just read. Exciting news for fans of the hit TV show The Sopranos. Michael Gandolfini stepping into his father's iconic role as a young Tony Soprano in the upcoming movie, The Many Saints of Newark. The movie's new trailer shows uh, Tony's early years in 1960s New Jersey and offers a peek at his rise to one of the most powerful mafia bosses ever. The movie hits theaters October 1st. I'm still going back to that other story we read about dating online yeah. and how you can fall in love with someone you've never met. Do you think it's because you probably made up 
what you want them to be, and yeah. you've never met them. So you can just tell yourself whatever you want. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think I was one of those people that, uh, you know, I, I first kind of judged the dating apps. I, did, I was skeptical of it. I thought I you were going to say it. you fell in love with someone you never met, and no. now you're married and have a child. <laughs> right. Well, it's funny. You were skeptical of the dating apps. Yes, right. I was. And then I did use them for a bit, mm -hmm. and now I think it's fun. I have some friends that met and are married because of it. Yeah. And then, of course, what happens? I meet my wife out and about. So it was not through an app. Where'd you meet her? Uh, at a bar. At a bar. Right? All so right. You're supposed Good. To do. Nice. 70s uh, to start off uh, this morning. That's your drive cast. I don't see any rain out there right now, but if you're leaving at about 9 a.m., you may run into some rain showers and some thunderstorms as well. Today, the last warm day. We've got some cooler air uh, as we head to the weekend. All right. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update coming up in 30 minutes. CBS This Morning is coming up next. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.